What's up, guys? Pastor Jeff Durbin here, Apologia Church. Apologia Studios is here on the ground, Washington, D.C., live at the Capitol. As you can see behind me right now, this is the scene of the Capitol right now. There's people all the way back behind the camera, all the way around the other side of the Capitol. Uh, so obviously things uh, have gotten pretty interesting here over the last couple of hours. Um, you probably can't hear all the noise behind me, but people are actually climbed up all the way on the top of the Capitol there, hanging flags over, and uh, some incidents happened. A lot of rumors about what actually happened inside, so I don't have all the most up-to-date. All I know is that uh, there definitely were people that were uh, pepper sprayed. People were pouring water into their faces to get the pepper spray off. Um, so, yeah, that's what's happening out here right now. I encourage you guys to share the stream. So... We are here today to try to offer some distinctly Christian commentary outside of the nation's capital today for the uh, Save America rally and all that was going on out here. Obviously, today is a very important day, uh, according to the Constitution, presenting the Electoral College votes uh, to this place right behind me here, which uh, now apparently has been all halted because of what took place here. Um, we are here on the ground, and it's interesting because a lot of people today are very, very concerned with injustice, fraudulent votes, those sorts of things. I think from our perspective as Christians, um, we want to ask the deeper questions in terms of what worldview makes sense of concern over fraud, lying about votes, those sorts of things. And the question we would have, I think fundamentally would be this, is do, are we in a place as a nation where we deserve a Biden and Harris uh, administration. There are a lot of people in this crowd who would identify as Christian. However, I think being here on the ground, I can safely say this isn't a fundamentally Christian movement that's gospel-centered. Uh, a lot of the things that people are talking about right now are very, very important. Of course, we're very concerned about con the Constitution, we're very concerned about injustice and fraud and those sorts of things. Those are very, very important things. But in terms of a consistent, meaningful voice, I think I'm very worried. I'm concerned because there's a wide variety of different uh, perspectives out here. And I think my main concern as a pastor is, are we in a place as a nation where God will bless America? Are we in a place in a nation where we are a repentant people who are yielded to Christ, to God's word, um, are we in a place as a nation where we've been impacted by the gospel to make sense out of a demand that our government um, is honest, that uh, we have a demand that um, our government doesn't go full-blown tyranny. When we talk about the evils of communism and communism is wicked, do we have a meaningful worldview to resist communism coming from, say, Kamala Harris or any other uh, political party or leader. And so there's some of the questions we have right now, but we're out here right now. We wanted to come here to show you guys what's happening on the ground. Uh, we wanted to come out here to have some conversations. Obviously, things are going kind of hectic right now. We just got an alert on our phones that, um, that there's a 6 o'clock curfew now, lockdown in D.C., and so things are, uh, things are definitely moving fast right now in Washington, D.C., but we wanted to come out here and we also wanted to announce to everybody that we are working, regardless of what happens here in D.C., we're working at the state level in right now 13 different states as Christians with legislation that's consistent with Scripture that is, in fact, very Christian legislation that would criminalize abortion, ban abortion, abolish abortion in these states. In Arizona right now, we have legislation that's going to be put in that would criminalize and abolish abortion in the state of Arizona. You have to forgive me right now. It is cold. It is cold right now. I can't feel my fingers right now. And the guys I'm bringing on in a moment right now are trying to kick, just jump up and down and feel warm so that their brains work. But we're right now working on legislation in the state of Arizona with Representative Walt Blankman to criminalize abortion in the state of Arizona. January 22nd is the day you can come to Arizona and join me. We're having a rally at 11 a.m. at the Arizona State Capitol, January 22nd. Come and meet with us. Come and join with us. It's about the gospel. It's about changing hearts, changing minds. Only Christ can do that. 
And so our rally's at 11 a.m. We're going to talk about what Walt Blackman is doing in the state of Arizona. We're working to abolish abortion in Arizona. Come and join us. Come drive from whatever state you're coming. Fly in. Come and join us. The rally's going to be Christ-centered, focusing on the gospel, focusing on God's word, and focusing on the end of abortion in, of course, all the states, but specifically, in this case, in the state of Arizona. I wanted to bring up for you right now my two guys. We're going to have Dennis and Zach. Zach Launchlager, Dennis Sarfani. Red State Reform. Come on in, guys. Red State Reform. All right, so just a couple comments on today. What's on your mind about today? What, as Christians, do we need to be thinking about in terms of what we've seen here today? I'll start with you, Zach. Well, obviously, we, as you said, we need to be concerned about fraud. We need to be concerned about honesty. We also need to be concerned about godly government. We need to be concerned about authority. Um, it is not okay when we have people who are in authority who do the wrong things. It doesn't just cast off all restraint. In fact, that's what the Scriptures tell us not to do. Do not go with the man who's given to change. We serve the Lord Jesus Christ. He ordains godly government. He ordains government. Um, and if, if when we have a problem, this is this is what America was founded on. This is what we spent 500 years in the Reformation doing. Is what do you do with a tyrant king well, or, 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 or tyrannical government? Well, you don't just go. You know, it's not just mob violence. You don't just cast off all restraint. Um, and unfortunately, for some, for a small group, that's what we're seeing here today. And there will always be people who are going to tar and feather somebody. And our founding fathers always stood up and said, no, you may not do physical violence. No, you may not harm people. You may not harm property. Not unless you are attacked and acting in self-defense. Well, I'm sorry, this is not a proportionate use of force. So I'm, I'm very sad to see uh, even some Christians standing up and saying, no, we need to, we need to make sure our demands are met. Um, that... That is always, of course, we must demand that our government do the right thing. Breaking into the chambers, uh, threatening violence to, to people, and threatening, uh, not just threatening, but breaking property, that is wrong. That is wrong, period. Yeah. Always. Absolutely. Dennis? Yeah, we can't have a revolution without this country repenting first. Uh, there is bloodshed. 66 million babies have been slaughtered since Roe v. Wade. I don't understand how people think that this nation should be blessed with what we've done. The church needs to wake up. And I think this is really big for the church. I think this is gonna this is gonna really go ahead and wake some people up inside the church and get it going in the right direction. Well I was saying earlier I was talking to somebody doing a little bit of an interview and I said exactly that. I said suffering hurts. I don't like it, but I'm kinda looking forward to uh, the the um, ability of suffering and a trial that may be ahead of us that will purge the church purify the church and get our focus back on Christ, God's standards of justice, and the most important things. And so you mentioned, of course, um, the over 60 million babies that have been murdered since Roe versus Wade. What's happening right now with Red State that's going to help to work against that? We're talking about criminalization. We're talking about abolition. So what is Red State doing to actually work against that? Yeah, well, we're working with the local magistrate. We're working with local state officials, state reps to get bills uh, introduced. We're working on them to get the roll call so that if you run a campaign on a pro-life campaign and you don't vote for our bills, then we are going to try to get you out. We're going to vote you out. We're going to go to your con constituents and we're going to tell them this is what he's doing. He's lying. He's not pro-life. And so what we have to do is get everyone to do that. We're in 13 states right now trying to get into 13 more. That's just 2021. So we really need to focus on your local government. The Supreme Court, the presidency, the vice president, they are not going to do anything to end abortion. It's going to come down to, yes, the church, the people, and the local magistrates. So that's what we're attacking. And you're talking about abolition. Delete. Criminalization. Yeah. Turn it off. It's, it's, it's over. over. Not regulation. No, no, no. We don't need any more regulation. And the regulation has been going on for 50 years, and it hasn't done nothing. We're talking about ending the abomination that's going on in our country. So, Zach, what's, what, what's, I guess maybe that, let's talk about that briefly, the distinction between sort of how people have approached this in the past in terms of ending abortion from what Red State is actually involved in right now. Right, right. So our major project is Action for Life, and that's the, that is the major project through which Red State is pursuing its, its goals. Uh, the, and, and those goals are to outlaw abortion, to criminalize it. It is, it is a crime. It is murder. It needs to be treated as such. And so our legislation... That we're working on in 13 states. Um, we have 13 more that are interested, turned out to be an equal number. So there are 26 states in which we're working. We'll probably see somewhere between 13 to 18 states this year that, are, that we see the bill introduced in. That'll be a record year 
um, and, and God is really opening the doors. Um, it's important to note that what we're talking about here is something that has always been part of the American system. And as, er, as recently as June 29th, 2020, um, U.S. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas noted that, of course, the states have not only the right but the responsibility under the Constitution to restrict and end abortion. Um, that is directly, it, it, was, uh, in, it was part of the Louisiana case, um, and that was his dissenting opinion when they overturned a lesser, certainly I, you could argue whether or not it, was if it, was an, it went far enough to Louisiana law. I'd probably argue it didn't. Um, but Thomas went much further than that. So this is not something that's extreme. Right now we see, I believe it is 11 states, I might have that number wrong, but it is around 10 states that have already told, us, told the federal government um, where to get off when it comes to marijuana. Um, when it comes to smoking pot, and, and actually there are more than states, the District of Columbia is one of them. Right now you can go down in front of the Justice Building and smoke a joint, and there's nothing the federal it government will do. It during the whole rally. We had people, guys yeah, smoking unfortunately. a joint three feet from my face. And so uh, we are already telling the federal government, no, you're wrong there. Don't do that. As states, I mean, um, what a crying shame that we're doing it to smoke pot, which does have its uses, um, and not doing it on abortion. Right. Um, the reason that's the case is because we have a very strong and politically powerful lobby for abortion. It is a major multi-billion dollar industry. Yeah. So, of course, they're going to spend money to, to keep it legal. Right. Um, we have to stand up to that. Now, we don't need their money. Uh, we don't need the amounts they have. But we do need the ability to hold the politicians accountable. That's what Dennis was talking about. Until they recognize that there is a political price for voting for abortion, they're going to continue to say, I'm pro-life. Now, where's my regulation bill this year? So, you know, clean the floors and you keep killing the babies. Yeah. That's wrong. That's right. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. So, January 22nd, end abortion now. The Ministry of Apology at Church is putting on a rally to preach the gospel, to plead for justice, and to, to rally believers around the idea that God is concerned with the plight of the fatherless child, with the preborn child. And so we are going to be January 22nd, 11 a.m., doing the rally. Come and join us, Arizona State Capitol, not long from now. Do what you can to get there. Join us. We'd love to be able to have you put your hand in our hand and actually encourage you to do the, be doing the same thing in the state that you're in. I think what's going to become very obvious to believers around the country is that if any change is going to take place, A, it has to be about the gospel first and foremost, and B, it has to be local. Yep. It has to be local, and it can be done. And so join us so we can work together towards that end. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and please be in prayer for our country.